will be sent through British education centers. And uh, walk around after this if you want to. And you will see that it truly is the home of British education here in Gurgaon. Miles, welcome to the British Education Center. It's all yours. Shashank, thank you so much for having us here and for your very kind introduction. I think it may be a first in terms of Oxford and Cambridge gatherings that there are no alcohol, so we can thank the Supreme, <laughs> and thank the Supreme Court of India for doing what the temperance movement failed to do. <laughs> but it's, a, it's really lovely to be with you and also to have some new college um, graduates um, here uh, as well. Um, I've, I've called this talk um, Reflections of a Returnee. Um, Mark and I are thrilled to be here in India on what I think is the first trip ever by um, New College um, and uh, I shall be a little bit more guarded in my second assertion because as you know we live in the post-truth world. In fact Oxford dictionaries um, have chosen post-truth as their word of the year. Um, usage of a term is believed to be 2,000% higher than in the previous year. Well, that still might not be so much because statistics also often get quite close to post-truth, as we, as we know. Anyway, I'm now going to make a claim about the first Englishman to visit India. I guess you may all be thinking of Sir Thomas Rowe, um, who was the envoy sent by James I um, to the court of the Jahangir. But no, the first Englishman to visit India 